A stock market crash or correction is certainly on the top of everyone's minds with the likes of Yahoo Finance, Morgan Stanley, Michael Burry and every stock market YouTuber predicting that a decline is just around the corner. The good news for us as investors is that stock market crashes have happened in the past and as a result, based on historical data, we can make some fairly accurate assumptions about how to deal with them in the future. Some of the most notable market crashes include the pandemic crash of 2020, the financial crisis of 2008, the dot-com bubble crash in the early 2000s, Black Monday in 1987 and and of course, Wall Street crash of 1929. And what may feel like complete and utter despair during the moment is wise to always remember that bear markets don't last forever and that better days will always come. The longest bear market on record for the past 50 years was the dot-com bubble, which lasted 31 months, declining 49% and took a total of 56 months to recover. Arguably one of the most painful and prolonged periods for any stock market investor during that seven year period. But some investors lost money in that market whilst others made an absolute killing. So how can both me and you guys end up on the winning side when the next stock market crash occurs? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be discussing during today's video. But before I do so, guys, my name is Mitch. I post all kinds of videos on investing and the stock market. If you do enjoy content like that, hit that big red subscribe button down below as well. Drop a like on the video, guys. Really, really helps out the channel. That being said, let's dive straight into it. Now, first up, in order to make things clear, during this video, I'm going to be talking from the perspective of my own personal investing philosophies, which in a nutshell is just simply to be a long-term investor in the stock market for the next 10, 15 or 20 years. So if you're very much in the same position as me and if you are that long term investor, be sure to listen up because in today's video I'm going to share with you guys four ways which you can make money during the next stock market crash. But firstly, for those of you guys who are perhaps a little bit new to investing, let me just explain very quickly what a market crash actually is. Well, there are two common terms in which people frequently use when they're referring to a declining stock market. The first one being a market correction whereby we see the value of the stock market fall by 10% or more. Now beyond that point in time when the market then reaches a decline of 20% or more, that's when we refer to the market being in a bear market. So it's important to understand that these two terms are very much define a very different market conditions when we're overall talking about a stock market selling off. But obviously the bigger the market decline, the more sh it hits the fan for the average investor. It's where you get the media infused panic, the fear and uncertainty resulting in people going on to sell their shares and realizing huge financial losses which is where I'm going to start off this video by talking about not just how we can certainly make money from the stock market, but also how we can prevent losing money too. And the way in which you can avoid not losing money is by first ensuring that you are in the right financial position before investing into the market. The reality is no market crash feels good for the investor, but it is just part of the game. At the end of the day, nobody likes to see their investment portfolio go from something to nothing, unless of course you're a Wall Street bets degenerate gambler who thinks it's just part of the fun. <coughs> but all jokes aside, to remove that level of fear from investing, to reduce the sleepless nights and the stress that goes with it from a potential fall in value of investment portfolio, first you must ensure that you are in a financially stable and secure position. To me personally, this means having at least a minimum of three months, but ideally six months or more worth of your monthly living expenses, held in cash in a savings account somewhere ready for a rainy day. It means if things take a turn for the worst in your personal life, if you lose your job, if you have to pay yourself through a pandemic, at least you'll have the emergency funds in place in order to keep you and your family afloat. And as a result, you obviously won't then need to start liquidating positions with in your investment portfolio because you have an emergency fund in place to cover all of your expenses. It's certainly a psychological advantage and a little bit of a mindset shift if you know that your finances are absolutely fine in your personal life and the money that you have in your bank account is absolutely fine just in case things take a turn for the worst. It allows you to then not have the fear when you're investing into the stock market and slightly more risky assets. Sometimes the most successful investors out there aren't necessarily the ones that feel like they know the most about the equity markets or any asset class in which they're investing into. Sometimes the most successful investors are simply the ones in which don't lose their head when things take a turn for the worst. Which leads me on perfectly to point number two, which is to think differently to the masses. Perhaps it's easier to say, but less easy to do. When the market is up, everybody feels like an investor investing genius. The thrill and euphoria usually takes over as the potential for unlimited upside begins to feel real. But when things take a turn for the worst and equity markets start to crash, 
Those same people who thought this would be a quick ride to millionaire status will be the first to sell out and realize their losses due to the short term mindset in which they have. Certainly don't follow the crowd and don't let your emotions be manipulated by the fear and greed of others. If you're a long term investor like me, it's critical that you ignore the noise and think differently to the masses. The media infused fear of doom and gloom will certainly make this a hell of a lot more difficult for the average investor out there. But for me personally, as a long term investor, I don't spend all that much time thinking about, let alone worrying about the short term price fluctuations of the stocks in which I'm invested into, or even the stock market on the whole. So point number three is to buy when everybody else is selling. There is an old saying that dates back a couple of hundred years that says buy when there's blood on the streets, even if the blood is your own. Historically, the best investments in which you could have made in the stock market were whilst the biggest stock market crashes occurred. Now, investing can certainly be a little bit ruthless when you think about it because somebody else's pain will be somebody else's gain. And if you take advantage of market crashes as and when they occur, you can significantly increase your average rate of return over the course of the long term. To bring this to life, an investment into the S&P 500 during market highs of February 2020 would have returned you 29% today. But an investment at the lows of the market would have provided you with returns of 89%. Now, yes, of course, you wouldn't have been making any money whilst the stock market was falling in value. But if you would have invested during the lows of the market, you would have three x your return just by taking action and investing whilst the market was down. So as Warren Buffett says, be fearful when others are greedy, but be greedy when others are fearful. Point number four is to be consistent with your intentions and with your strategy. Famous investor Benjamin Graham once said, the individual investor should act consistently as an investor and not as a speculator. It can be also easy to be enticed away from your own investment principles and your own investment strategy when you see the potential for quick returns elsewhere. This is also known as the shiny ball syndrome and it's certainly not a type of syndrome in which you want as an investor. It's the type of investor that jumps from one stock to another, from one asset class to another in the continued pursuit of quick gains. But this strategy only ever leaves you chasing your tail and the likelihood is probably trying to recuperate losses from the investments in which you've made. So if your investment philosophy is anything like mine, which is to simply buy good quality stocks or even indeed an index fund, your time horizon is to be a long term investor and your investment strategy is to cost average your way into the market over time. Stick to those principles and don't deviate unless you see significant amount of opportunity elsewhere that aligns with both your investment objectives and your risk tolerance too. Because history tells us that investing into an index fund like the S&P 500 can provide historical rates of return in the realms of about 8 to 10% per year, which is certainly not going to be a quick way to millionaire status, but it certainly is a way in order to ensure that you get there. So it really is that simple for the long term investor. And the final point that I did want to make in this video is to try not to over prepare and time the market all that much when it comes to looking at a stock market crash. There's a quote from Peter Lynch where he says that far more money has been lost by investors preparing for corrections or trying to anticipate corrections than has been lost in the corrections themselves. And the reason why that's important is because every single year there is an analyst that comes out and says that a potential stock market crash is just around the corner. Now, if you would have sat out the market for a long period of time, you could potentially would have missed out on a bull run of 20, 30, 40, 50, 60% or more in the event to just simply wait for a market correction of 10 or 20% simply to buy in at a better market price. Because the best time to invest was probably yesterday, especially when you're thinking about it from a long term investment point of view. So these are the investing principles in which I've personally stuck with through my relatively short time investing into the stock market over the course of the past three and a half to four years. But nonetheless, they've seen me well through a couple of market corrections, as well as obviously the big stock market crash in 2020 and my whole investment portfolio is very healthy and very much in the green as of right now. So with that said guys be sure to let me know down in the comment section what your strategies are for dealing with the next stock market crash as and when it occurs and if you enjoyed the video guys be sure to drop a like on it subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with that being said I'll see you over in the next video.